Welcome to today's 3D print. I have some goodies to show you guys. The next Mega Print episode is coming in a couple of days. I got some successful big prints. <laughs> but um, my um, projects are actually coming along. Um, the guy who wants me to make the, the utility blades out of plastic with the company logo on it. That's pretty cool. Um, by the way, that Sunlu filament, wow. It's like a silk filament. Look at the sheen on that. That's beautiful. That's a pretty plastic. Oh, now I wish I bought more. <laughs> I'm wondering if the colored ones have that same silky sheen to them. I'm about to pull a blue one out and try that. So that's coming along good. I should get my first payment for that actually tomorrow, which is exciting. It's fun. And I just dropped one. So that's interesting. He might be having me make 1,500 of those. Um, the other project, uh, a local person is working on a a robotic mower and he had me print this. Uh, I'm not sure what that's for, but we'll figure out what to charge for that. If I make 15, 20 bucks, I'll be happy. But he might have other parts for me to print, so that's cool. That came out real nice. That, this is using the Polymax Polylight on the CR10. That came out very nice. I did this in my standard 3x3x3. Three, by three, by three. three top, three bottom, three perimeters, so it comes out nice and stiff. I mean, this is crazy stiff. It's good. I like that. I thought you guys would get a kick out of this. It came out a little warped because of how thin it was, but it's pretty cool. That is the print volume of an Ender 2. Someone wanted to see it. Someone asked me, you know, how big can you print? That big. That's the biggest you can print. To give you a comparison, this is my 3 inch nose cone. Right. Uh, what else is a good comparison? Here's my LG V20 phone. That's my LG V20 phone. And, um, but that is the, the total print volume of the, actually you can go a tiny bit bigger than this, but that's the, the total print volume. That's 150 by 155 by 225 or 220. Um, it can go to 225, but that's your total print volume of an Ender 2. Oh yeah, that is impressive for such a cheap printer. Okay. Lastly, I want to talk about things for you to go buy. These aren't affiliate links. I can't give you affiliate links because all this stuff is from Dollar Tree. So if you're in the U.S. and you have a Dollar Tree, this is some nifty cool stuff that you can get at Dollar Tree. First, you have those Jot um, parts container things I was telling you about. It's a dollar at Dollar Tree. They also have these smaller ones. That's what all this stuff is. Stuff I'm going to show you from Dollar Tree. These are pretty cool. These are nice and thin, and these are also relatively stackable. They have a, a ridge here, all the way around, and then there's these marks here. That's so they can stack and they stay together. That's pretty cool. That's great for all your little bolts and stuff like that. Um, masking tape. I'm going to give you a little tip trick tonight for how to use this to unstick stubborn prints from your printer. Um, they also have a great deal on LED bulbs, which is great for your printing room or whatever, but this is... um. A 9 watt bulb that puts out 800 lumens, nice decent color light, sunbeams, good bulb. Now, hey, it's a dollar. Keep your eye out for the green light ones because they sometimes have those in two packs. That's two LED bulbs for a buck. Hello, yes, I'll take some. Got any a little more light? Mm -hmm. Crank up the light a little bit. There we go. Oh, yeah. Next, they have this neat little kit. It's different kinds of tweezers and stuff. Dollar. Hello, that's a dollar. Sanding block. I love these sanding blocks. These things are great. Trash can. But you got you have a medium and a fine grit, and these are great for sanding something if you need to sand it, or for example, you need to roughen up your print bed a little bit. Even if it's tape, just take this gently and just roughen it up a little bit and get better stiction. You know, these are handy. You can also get whole packs of sandpaper, 36 packs of sandpaper. So you have, um, it looks like 80, 240, 400. Okay, waterproof 80, 240, 400, and abrasive standard paper for wood, 80, 100, 150. 
So that's um, 80, 100, 150, 240, and 400 grit sandpaper, a pack of 36, including wet sandpaper for a dollar. It's hard to beat. Pens. Pens are always handy. Keep your eye out for the Inkjoy pens, the Paper Mate Inkjoy. These things are great. They write beautifully. I love them. Sometimes they have the two pack of clicker, the retractable ones. I love those, but they haven't had them in a long time, which is a pity. I'm a delivery driver, so I go through a lot of pens. <laughs> I'm delivering Papa John's. Uh, I actually had somebody ask, you know, does your company pay you well for advertising for them? Um, no, Papa John's does not pay me well for wearing their shirt on my video. It's just I make these videos after I get home from a 10 hour, 12 hour shift, and I'm too damn tired and lazy to change shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's changing because I got some today's 3D print shirts coming in. I did not realize you can get custom stuff like that so cheap. I think I paid $42 and I got two shirts and an embroidered hat. Wow. Well, there's like a 40% off coupon. You never buy from Vistaprint without coupons. I like the coupons. Um, flashlight. LED flashlight. Focusable. So you can tighten it down. It's a cheap focus, meaning it's basically just narrowing the beam without actually focusing the beam, but it works. But a great little flashlight. It's good for checking your prints, making sure they're going right. Don't forget the four pack of alkaline batteries for a dollar. Um, cheap extension cord. Trash can. You can never have too many of these little extension cords. These are great when you have to plug a bunch of little things into an outlet. You know, you don't plug your printer into this. But your Raspberry Pi can plug into this, your little LED desk lamps can plug into this, your little cameras can plug into this, your little fans can plug into this, so you're not sucking up all those outlets. You know, it's a dollar for a six foot, three outlet extension cord. Um, binder clips. A dozen multi size binder clips. Dollar. Big old glue stick, the purple kind that is, goes on purple and turns clear. Dollar. Dollar tree. And it's big. Um, putty knife. They're not sharp, so you'll have to sharpen it, but hey, again, it's not a bad rubberized handle. It's not a, it's a nice little putty knife for a buck. Little ratcheting screwdriver. It's better than the crap screwdriver that the printers usually come with, and for any of those that aren't hex bits where you need a Phillips, it's perfect. Nice little ratcheting screwdriver. It's compact. It's a dollar. Zip ties. Lots of zip ties. They're garbage zip ties. They're not very strong. You can break these with your hand if you pull hard enough, although you'll probably sting a little bit, but you can break them. But for cable management, you don't need 200 PSI nylon zip cords, you know, 200 pound test. I mean, this is fine for cable management. It's perfect. And they have long ones and short ones, so cheap zip ties. Um, this is a nifty pack. It is soft stick felt pads in all different sizes. Great for putting it underneath your printer when you want to put it on a wooden table or something like that. You don't want to scratch or you don't want it to be noisy. They're perfect little feet. This is what I use on my Maker Select. After I put my Z-bracing and stuff on it, I just put the felt pads on the four corners of the printer and the two towers and four of them on the um, box and then it, it sat nice, didn't scratch anything. You know, it's perfect. A whole thing of felt pads, self-stick for, again, a dollar. This is cool. This is new. I just found this today. I did not see this before today. So. If you like this, I'm going to go grab a couple more. Go get it while you still can. A right angle ruler. Hello. And it does inches and millimeters, centimeters. This is great. Wow. I mean, it's a freaking dollar. And it's metal. I mean, it'll probably bend easy if you're not careful with it, but my God, it's a freaking dollar for that. Never ceases to amaze me what you can get at dollar stores nowadays. Um, anything else? Oh yeah, I forgot the most important thing. This is great. You're gonna love this. This is very, very cool. I was so pleased when I got home and tested it and it fit. It is a reusable round container, four liter container, okay, and relatively airtight. I think good enough if you toss a silica pack in there because guess what fits? You got it. Filament. And so far, every single one I've tried fits in there. I haven't found any that are bigger. That's awesome. It's 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 a little bigger than you need. I wish I could get one that was shorter and a tiny bit bigger at the bottom so it's flat and take up less space. But if you have um, moisture sensitive filament that you want to store without having to go big and huge and zip nasty Ziploc bags, $1 at Dollar Tree for this, uh, the four liter round 
SureFresh container, and it feels airtight. Like I push on it, and, I, it, it, and it doesn't it doesn't squish out. So I think it is airtight. So you toss the silica gel packet it came with in there, and you got it. If you ever need to recharge your silica gel packets, just put them in the oven at 100 degrees. Just leave them in there for a couple hours, and when you take them out, you're good to go. Put them in a Ziploc bag, seal it up so they don't absorb any moisture. And then whenever you seal up your container, just toss a couple of them in um, your container. But that's that's amazing. One dollar for that. Um, a little tip trick for you guys. You ever have a print that's really hard to get off, and the biggest problem is you can't get it started. You got you got to get under the print in at least one point to be able once you can do that once you can get under one point on the print like if you got a print so you've got that print and you need to get under at least one point to start prying it off and once you get under there it starts to come off no problem you'll actually hear it, it feels like it's te it sounds like it's tearing as the plastic separates from the print bed but sometimes you just can't get an entry in there if you're making a large surface area print that you know is going to have that problem and you you'll, once you get enough experience you'll realize you're like yep that's covering 30 percent of the bed that's going to be hard to get off there's an easy solution to that it mars up your finish a little bit on the bottom but who cares? We're talking a very minor thing. While it's printing your skirt, you're printing a skirt, right? Always printing a skirt. While it's printing your skirt, it's going to draw the outline of the model. So once it's gotten past an area, pick a point, any point, doesn't matter. Back side of the model, doesn't matter. Pick a point. Once it prints your skirt, so here's going to be the model outline, and here's the skirt. Take a piece of tape and put the piece of tape down on the print bed like that so that the part of the tape is underneath the model. That's it. Okay? When you do that, let me show you on something where it would make sense. Something where I can peel it off. By the way, the battery extensions didn't work. They are different. They are significantly wider. They look the same, but as soon as you put them together, you realize, shit. It's wider, it's a different kind of plug. So same style of plug, different kind of plug. So here you have your tape on your object. And you've got your 3D print sitting on top of it. And now half the tape is underneath your 3D print. That's what you want, okay? Now you have an easy way of getting a start underneath there. You peel the tape up until you're up against the model. And then you take some of your, your alcohol spray, four bucks at Rite Aid, all right, buy this and then buy the larger bottles to refill this, okay? You peel your tape up, you spray some alcohol underneath there, and now you can hold that tape up and you can stick your razor sharp wedge in there and start working in. This gives you the in you need to get underneath the plastic part so that you can start prying it off. So there's your little tip of the day for getting a stubborn print off the print bag. But all that at Dollar Tree. It's incredible what you can buy at Dollar Tree. It's, it really is pretty incredible. Um, if I find any more neat Dollar Tree stuff, unless I find a whole bunch all at once like that, um, I'll just add it to any one of my videos. Oh, by the way, I got this at Dollar Tree. It's pretty cool. Um, micro USB cables. Go to Dollar Tree, get them. Don't get the light up ones. Get the um, solid color ones. Don't get the stupid metal ones. Get the solid color ones that look kind of like this. The current du jour cable, they change it all the time, looks like this. Okay, it's just solid rubber. It's not, it doesn't have the fancy metal ends, it doesn't have the fancy light up ends, just the generic regular cable. These are great, they work fine. They quick charge, they go at two amps. I have never had a problem with these cables. The, the fancy funny ones, they always give me trouble, but the um but these, no problem. So if you need micro USB cables, I'm looking forward to the day when we start getting the USB C cables at Dollar Tree. That's gonna be cool. Um, I do believe that is it. I am going to go to Maker Faire. I got off from work. So I will be, uh, barring some crazy thing happening, uh, almost today, my car got wrecked. Uh, lady stopped behind me at the stop sign, or at the red light, and then her foot slipped. She hit the gas and drove into the back of my car. She mounted my... Um, 
trailer, my carrier, the cargo carrier I have behind the car, and proceeded to smash up the back of my car pretty badly. Uh, trying to find a good picture to show you. Yeah, here we go. That'll work. Come on, play nice. Here we go. Yeah. Smashed up the back of my car. Great. It's a 2012 Nissan Leaf that I stole $11,000 on. You know what it's worth? Five if I'm lucky. Probably more like $4,500. You see, um, these first generation cars, after about 50,000 miles, they start to lose a lot of their range. Like, I'm down to 60 miles. Now, I'm happy. It's great for pizza delivery. I love it. I have a backup car at work. Um, but the hatch is all curled in and and um, I think the cargo carrier actually made it worse because she went over top of the cargo carrier instead of her being pushed down and me being pushed up as is typically the case when you rear end somebody she mounted the cargo carrier so she could not push up and I could not push up either because again she's on top of my cargo carrier that kept our bumpers perfectly aligned so 100% of her impact force went straight into the back of the car um, so that's going to really suck because now I can't sell the car ever. Um, it's already only worth about four or five thousand dollars. What happened is um, it's a thirty-eight thousand dollar car. I paid eighteen for it. It's worth about twenty-two when I got it. So I got a pretty good deal. It wasn't a bad deal. But about eight months after I bought the car, they announced the new one with the better battery, and the value of the cars went <laughs> really, really fast. And then you add that I got sixty-five thousand miles on the car, and I'll have ninety before I'm done with it. Yeah, it's not worth much. Not when you can get a thirty thousand dollar car that does one hundred fifty miles. Um, but the plan was to once I get to the point where my amount I owe on a loan is below what the car is worth, sell it and then go get a newer one, like in two thousand fifteen, which I can get for half of what I currently owe. Dead battery, of course. <laughs> anyway, um, when they announced the newer cars a few years ago, about eight months after I bought mine the value of the existing cars with the original um, lower capacity battery went <coughs> and hit the bottom and never came up of course I didn't care because the car was saving me money it saved me a hundred bucks every single month in gas alone and no maintenance but um and this battery's almost dead too really we'll see if it lasts so um the good news is they might total it because the damage is pretty extensive and there might even be frame damage from where the hitch attaches and um, people are going to tell me they're probably going to total the car which would be fantastic because I have gap insurance so the gap insurance would wipe out the rest of my loan and not only that, but they'll give me a thousand dollars free and clear for a down payment to get a loan on a new car so I'll be able to hopefully go get a 2015 for a lot less than um, I'm currently paying for this one I'd keep the payment the same so I can pay it off faster but um, the total loan amount will be a lot smaller because I can get a 2015 for like seven or eight thousand dollars, maybe less. Um, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. We'll see. But that sucks because I love that car. God, I love that car so much. I love my electric car. <laughs> but um, I'll be at Maker Fair on Saturday. I don't think I can go Sunday. Too much money. It's another two hundred and thirty dollars, and I just don't have that. So probably just Saturday. But I'm going to be able to meet um, Joel Telling. 3D printing nerd, which is fantastic. I'll be able to meet Angus, which is fantastic. I don't know if Barnacles is going to be there. I hope so, because I like his channel, too. I have fun watching him and whoever else might be there. I'm also hoping this will be an opportunity where I might be able to network, be able to connect and become known to these people, and simply being aware of me, if they decide that I'm likable, maybe, you know, just that interaction alone might help boost my exposure because the I need exposure I need more I need more subscribers more people actively watching the videos in order to expand anything to be able to go anywhere and um, I might as well give you guys this little sneak peek you're gonna like this we're going through mass cleanup tomorrow to empty out that room next to me because I need a lot more space <laughs> are you ready for this yeah that's from GearBest. Those three enormous boxes. So one of them is a TiVo Tornado, one of them is a CR-10S, and one of them is a CR-10S4. Holy crap. 
<laughs> That's insane. I think my guy at gear vest is absolutely nuts. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> oh, wow, what I was mentioning before, um, Papa John doesn't pay me anything. I'm just too lazy to change his shirt when I get home. Just, I'm not climbing all the way upstairs to get a shirt, coming all the way back downstairs. Just, no. They would probably prefer if I didn't have the shirt on when I made these videos, but that's eh, too bad. <laughs> but once I have the Today's 3 print shirts, I'm going to leave them down here on a hanger and I'll just put one of them on every time I make a video. And why not? I'm going to have them. You know, I got them for like $12 a piece. I might as well wear them. But um, that's it. I can't think of anything else. That Sunlu filament, I'm going to put that through its paces because that really impressed me. This filament really is, it's its actually pretty, it's beautiful filament. It has, I don't need, yeah, you can see it, I'm pretty sure that is visible in the video. It has this beautiful silky sheen, it's almost like the silk filament, the Ultra PLAs, but not quite, it's like a, um, a satin silk. But whatever, and it's, oh no, it's not strong. Oh, oh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Now there was an imperfection there, maybe that is why it broke there, but, whoa, well now you get to see the inside of all my nose cones. <laughs> well, okay, maybe the Sunlu PLA is not good for rocket parts, so um, I'm glad I actually tried that, in that live. <laughs> Let's see if it does it again. Mm-hmm, yeah, not as bad, but it is breaking again. My other ones do not break that easily, so this might not be good for my rocketry parts. Unless um, I have to anneal it to get the properties, uh, I'll have to try that. I, I hope that can work, because it really is a beautiful filament. It's stronger than the Ultra PLA, definitely, the 3D Solutech, it doesn't break apart nearly as easily. I, I did have to actually squeeze it pretty hard, but I can take one of my other nose cones. and squeeze the living hell out of it. And it does not break. Okay? So, there's definitely the PLA. It's not just, um, you know, it's not like, that That was squeezing. <laughs> so, um, even though I did squeeze it very hard, I didn't squeeze it nearly as hard as I squeezed that one. And that's from the same file. Three perimeters, same thing. Infill at that section and that section. So, that's a pity. Oh man, that is so pretty too. Damn it. <laughs> it was $10 a kilogram, okay? It's not a bad PLA. I mean, that's not bad. Most PLAs would, you know, break under similar conditions. The one the one I'm using is usually strong. That's the Esun PLA Pro. But um, I was expecting more. I thought their PLA Plus was going to be like Esun's PLA Pro. So, all right, this battery's about to die, so I'm going to end the video. I will see you guys on the next Mega Print episode. I will see you guys on the build videos, and I will see whoever shows up at the New York Maker Fair.